Greetings Metalheads and welcome to No Nonsense Metal Reviews. I'm George and today I'm back with another band's You Need to Hear recommendation. Another band, if you've never heard of them, never checked out their music, then I seriously strongly urge that you remedy that and check this band out because it is some top quality metal. So, today's recommendation, I've actually been talking about this band quite a bit over previous months. I was talking about them quite a bit when unboxing my debut order from Vicious Witch Records, which is where I acquired a couple of the CDs. But actually, it's a relatively recent discovery for myself. But there's lots of connections there. There's a lot of history with this particular band that absolutely ticks all the boxes for me. And from this quite brief, quite short catalogue that we've actually got here, this band has only been around since 2020. I'm absolutely loving all of these releases, all this material. And yeah, I'm very, very highly anticipating the next album. So the band in question is none other than Brazilian Death Thrashers Troops or the Troops of Doom. Now, I'm sure that the Troops of Doom or Troops of Doom is a name that will conjure up many memories and images in the minds of many a devoted thrash metal or death metal fan or just metal fan in general. Of course, the name comes from a classic Sepultura song, the legendary Sepultura. Brazilian thrash pioneers, and also pioneers of kind of death thrash, the more aggressive side of the thrash metal spectrum. One of the true standouts, in my opinion, and one of my favourite bands of all time, for sure. So, the, there is, of course, a connection there further. So the name, of course, but also a common member. So, ex-Sepultura guitarist Gyro Gudes, or Gudes um, is heading this particular band, along with a very stable lineup, in fact. But Gyro Tormentor, as he was known then, uh, in his tenure with Sepultura, was an original guitarist, original member of Sepultura, present for the great Morbid Visions and Bestial Devastation material. So he was a resident guitarist. Gyro was a great contributor to these classic songs and an integral part, a very important, important figure. And not to say that uh, Max Cavalera and of course Igor Cavalera um, weren't just as important. I think there's a lot of uh, Gyro's guitar sound that's stamped on these classic Sepultura recordings and of course on Troops of Doom. You can hear, you can kind of tell there's a connection there, there's a familiarity, a sense of familiarity with the guitar work, with the musicianship there. I absolutely love this classic Sepultura. I've talked about this a lot. Um, Bestial Devastation was one of the EPs that I talked about on the My Favourite EPs reviews that I did a while back. Haven't done one of them in a, in a while, so it's probably due another instalment. The few more EPs I've picked up along the way since, but I absolutely love this album. I am aware that the logo is slightly different at this stage. Um, Although we can see, you know, there's embryonic links there. Uh, although it was actually, you know, on a slightly, slight, slight sidetracked um, point, it was actually Arise, which was the first Sepultura album that I really got into. But around the same time, I was getting into this very heavily as well. So loved Sepultura for a lot of years. But the Troops of Doom keep that early Sepultura vibe spirit and sound very much alive and very very healthy let's not beat around the bush there is a lot of thrash metal bands out there there's a lot of death thrash out there and top quality metal out there top quality thrash around that said 
I think that these guys, the Troops of Doom, are a serious standout. They are really cutting above the crowd. What they're doing, yes, it might not be reinventing the wheel, but their reinterpretation and their brand of Death Rash is absolutely exceptional. Brilliant stuff. So, as I mentioned, Gyro has a very capable band alongside him um, since the inception in 2020. And the lineup has been pretty consistent since. So obviously we've got Gyro on guitars. We've also got uh, Alex Kafer on bass and vocals. Very good vocalist. Really does remind me of young Max Cavalera and the vocal sound and style that we get on this classic material. Not to say that he's a ripoff or a mimic at all. Alex is a great vocalist and does a really good job on all of these Troops of Doom releases so far. Also joined by Marcelo Vasco on guitar as well and on uh, Alexandre Oliveira on drums. Very talented, very capable musicians. No question at all whatsoever with that. So let's take you through those releases then. From 2020, the debut release was this EP entitled The Rise of Heresy. Now this is solid as a rock. This is one of the uh, two discs, two out of three, that I purchased from Vicious Witch Records here in the UK. So if you're looking to pick up physical copies of these EPs, check out Vicious Witch and check out their store as you can acquire these lovely digipacks on there. So, The Rise of Heresy consists of four original tracks and two Sepultura covers. I say covers, I suppose, are you really covering your own music? Re-recordings? I don't know, but hey, that's a, that's a different discussion altogether. But we've got a great mix of tracks here. A really, really, really strong EP. This is some of the strong, strongest material. Uh, if we take a couple of these tracks, in particular, Whispering Dead Words. It kicks off the EP, it's a, it's a good length track, five plus minutes, solid, it sets the tone, it sets the agenda perfectly. What I will say, um, although I have already said that there's a lot of resemblance of early, early aggressive Sepultura throughout this music, I think that's to be expected, but there's also strong, very strong vibes of Slayer, in that seriously crunchy, chugging thrash. There's a lot of creator there. There's certain resemblances to some of that early, aggressive, to Megatherian era Celtic Frost as well. Little bits and pieces, little utterances and influences are detectable throughout. But the main ones are obviously Sepultura, Creator, um, and I would say... It's definitely fair to say there's a little bit of a stamp of the early death scene as well with bands like Death, for example. Maybe even Morbid Angel in there. A couple of times I've sensed a bit of classic death. But definitely, if, if you enjoy in classic Sepultura and Slayer, then you're definitely going to enjoy this. But Whispering Dead Words, really strong way to kick off this EP. Then we're into Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea. There's a certain grand nature to this in sound and style. It's quite well produced, I will say. Uh, strong production here. Strong, thick sound. None of it is weak. None of it is thin. Actually, a really well produced recording, I will say. Really strong. Best two tracks from here. Probably the latter two there of the original material. The Confessional and The Rise of Heresy, both of those really reek of classic Sepultura from the, uh, the Morbid Vision sort of era, and also the strong Slayer vibes there as well. Really decent thrashing riffs, heavy chugging sections. It really freaking works. And then delightfully, we've got re-recordings, covers, whatever you want to call them, Bestial Devastation, the EP title track, the legendary title track, and of course we've got the the name piece there, the Troops of Doom. Absolute classic. Both really good re-recordings, really good versions, really strong. The guitar work is fantastic. Love the drum sound. I love the prominence of the bass. Vocals, brilliant. 
perfect, fitting, certainly those covers really fitting um, a, a tribute to Max Cavalera and his vocal style. So that's the debut EP, The Rise of Heresy. The following year, 2021, we've got The Absence of Light, which is really strong. I will say that there is a bit of a notable difference in production quality or the sound is quite different. And I will admit that I actually thought this, The Absence of Light, was older than The Rise of Heresy, purely because it has a really old school sound to it. Certainly, it, it sounds as though it could have crawled out of 1987. You know, that brief period where uh, Gyro was in Sepultura between 85 and 87. It sounds as though this could have easily been recorded at that time. That said, it is really good. It's exciting. It's energetic. You've got some fantastic tracks here. There is an intro piece before two original tracks, part one and two, um, or act one and two. We've got The Devil's Tale and then The Monarch, which features Jeff from Possessed which is a really cool little nod there. And I think that's actually another fairly fairly acceptable contrast and uh, comparison there. There is a sort of a possessed vibe as well. That sort of, certainly that death thrash uh, from the legendary Seven Churches, of course. Strong vibes I'm picking up there as well. But it's, it's a great track. Both of those tracks, uh, The Devil's Tale and The Monarch, full of thrashing riffs really strong grooves and chug aggressive stuff but seriously hit bang worthy material uh, then we get a brilliant cover of antichrist a fantastic and really refreshing version there keeping that old school spirit alive but delivering it fast and freaking furious then we've got two demos actually we've got demo versions of the devil's tale and the monarch as well just thrown in for good measure. Does not disappoint one little bit. Really freaking solid. Even the even the demo, demo quality, you know, it's enjoyable. They're just really good songs. And I think that's the thing. It's not just trying to rip off classic Sepultura. No way at all. By no means. It's actually really well written material. Songwriting's great. The structuring's great. And it's oddly kind of refreshing and revitalizing this as i say this is some of the best death thrash that i've heard in a long time and i have been keeping up with the scene trying to check out new bands but aside from maybe legion of the damned they're definitely one of the best that i've heard for a little while so then we're on to this this absolute monster of an album this is the debut album from 2022 this is Antichrist Reborn, and I love this album. I absolutely freaking love it. It's start to finish. Brilliant. Production is fantastic. It's actually produced by the Troops of Doom, but it's mixed by Peter Tagtgren, uh, the legendary producer, guitarist, vocalist, legend, metal legend himself. Um, as you can see there, Abyss Studios. So it's got a master behind the mixing desk there sounds fantastic the sound quality here is massive um it sounds as big i will say and some people will dislike this comparison that certainly with some of those really crunchy riffs really thrashing riffs it reminds me a little bit of the latter catalog of slayer at times um and to me that's no bad thing because i freaking love slayer but in terms of just having a massive sound really strong sound there's no th thin tones anywhere it delivers the freaking goods so antichrist reborn we've got 10 tracks here of original material all of them so massively strong there's our lineup there looking serious i do also love the nods to the classic artwork of sepultura as you can see in the middle there we've got the bestial devastation kind of antichrist satan demon figure and then obviously there's so many nods here on the front cover of antichrist reborn we kick off with an absolute ripper in dethroned messiah absolutely fantastic what can i say just top quality death thrash a little bit of a nod to celtic frost there 
just a punchy delivery. Then we've got an absolute crusher in Far From Your God, which is a thrashing masterpiece. Really, really fast paced stuff. Furious, furious rather. Absolutely delivers the goods. Altar of Delusion, solid. Uh, Pray Into the Abyss is an album standout for me. Uh, one of a couple of standouts. It's the fifth track there. Talk about some of the grooves, some of the riffs there. Fantastic vocals as well. Really, really bestial vocals. Certainly on a track like that. But a really good one. Some of those massive riffs are absolutely city levelling. This just proper headbang stuff. Guaranteed to appease any Sepultura fan. Any fan of classic, those classic um, tracks from the early days. Then we've got The Rebellion, another strong one. Deserters from Paradise. Uh, we've got Acuda, um, track there, probably mispronouncing that, apologies if I am. Uh, number nine, that is, that's got some punky spite and aggression on it. Decent track, does really remind me of that good old Sepultura, really strong, heavy stuff indeed, very thrashing. Then we close the original material with Preacher's Paradox, again. A massive track and the second of the sort of proper album highlights for me. Top quality stuff. Those riffs, man. Absolutely incredible. Then we've got two bonus tracks on this particular version. I will say this is a lovely digipack version. Um, I think I actually just bought this on Amazon. I don't, I don't think I saw it anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I think you can get it massively overpriced on eBay. But it just happened to be about a tenner on Amazon when I picked up copy. Another classic Sepultura cover re-recording, we've got Necromancer, which is one of my favorite tracks from the early era. Definitely, absolutely love that track. And then delightfully, we've got a cover of The, Sur the Usurper, rather, from to Megatherian, from the legendary, legendary Celtic Frost. Uh, clearly an influence, clearly a big inspiration there. Start to finish, this is a fantastic, fantastic album it's around the sort of 45 minute mark so not overly long but it's just start to finish absolutely brilliant if you love freaking massive riffs strong vocals aggressive vocals not not death growls but not a million miles away from a sort of a david vincent uh style or maybe jeff of possessed of course not a million miles away from that so you know there's a clarity there basically Thrashing, just freaking brilliant. If you love Sepultura, if you love Slayer, Creator, Morbid Angel, that kind of riff heavy stuff, then you're definitely going to love the Troops of Doom. And I seriously strongly recommend that you check them out. So, the Troops of Doom, a brand you absolutely need to hear. What are your thoughts and opinions on this very unique and very interesting Band. There is a new album coming out in 2024, uh, this year in fact I should say. Very much looking forward to that because they've been on an astounding uh, working pace so far. We've had, you know, two EPs two years in a row, then we've had the debut and obviously they've been working on the, uh, the follow-up sophomore album to that as well. But do check out The Troops of Doom, top quality band. Let me know what you think, very interested to hear. Are you a fan already? What are your thoughts and opinions on these releases? I am very interested to hear thoughts and opinions of others as always. Please do feel free to like, comment, subscribe. It's always very much appreciated. Do check back soon for more reviews and recommendations of all the good heavy things. Take care of yourselves, my friends, and until next time, stay heavy. <laughs>